Before this space was just a typical garage that you could or couldn't park a car in here because it was always occupied with things you may or may not need. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to build custom cabinets so I can start to build this garage out and turn it into something much more efficient. Like any space you wanna work on, the first thing you gotta do is clear that thing out and get started. To get started, I'm gonna cut down a sheet of plywood and I actually have a lot of these to cut down. Normally I use a circular saw to cut these down to a manageable size, but in this case, I'm just gonna run these through the table saw. Now I happen to find it a bit meticulous and sometimes hard to sand in corners. So whenever it's possible, I like to sand things down before I do the assemble. You can assemble cabinets in so many ways, but using pocket holes is a really quick and simple way and very approachable one for many people. When I use pocket holes, the first thing I wanna do is figure out how to hide them. When I have that answer, I simply mark the location and drill the pocket holes. This storage cabinet is made up of two parts and this is the top. When you're building cabinets or furniture with pocket hole joinery, the goal here is to keep the pocket holes hidden. Instead of wasting an entire sheet of plywood filling in the back panel of these cabinets, I cut smaller sections used for the back end, which is how I'm gonna mount the cabinet. Once the cabinet is mounted, I'll use quarter inch sheet of plywood to fill the back end. Now that the top side frame is assembled, I'll go ahead and work on the bottom half. The construction is the same, just smaller. Within this frame, there'll be a massive multi-purpose drawer and it's a bit hard to explain, so the best thing to do is build it so you can get a better visual. I'll need to build four identical pieces that looks like this. Now I'll take two of the four parts that was just assembled and attach it to what is said to be the middle section. Now that I finish one part, I'll flip that over and add this second part. When this is complete, you wanna make sure this is sitting flat. I'll repeat the same thing again, but have these favoring towards the top. Before adding them, I'll mark out a reference line so I can place it at that location. This is the intersection of the massive bottom drawer. At the top, you have two compartments for low profile tools. And in the lower section, you have a bigger storage area where you can place tools at the bottom and enough space at the top to hang drills and other power tools. And at this point, I just need to add plywood to the front and back to close this up. The front and back will not be visible so I can drive screws right through them. Now, since the drawer is quite heavy on its own, I ended up adding two sets of drawer slides on it, one at the bottom and one at the top. I need to get these cabinets out of the shop and over to the new location. Before I do so, I'll drill the holes in the doors for the hinges. This way I don't have to bring as many tools with me.
Now I really wanted to paint these cabinets in my shop because I just have a better setup there, but I was running low on time and needed to build some momentum, so I brought them over to the location where I plan to install them. This is the back wall to the garage and width wise, it's the best location for the cabinets. So now that I have everything all cleared out of here, it's a bit echo in here, but the first thing I'm gonna do is install the cabinet over here. But what I wanna check first is to see how straight this wall is because over here on this section, I can sort of see the wall going in and that might be a problem for how I wanna install the cabinets, but I'll have to figure this out on the fly. While I know I have an issue with the wall, I'll go ahead and work on something I can take care of right away and that's removing a section of this trim. The cabinets will be attached to the wall, but I also want to take advantage of this concrete lip that sticks out here. And that's a plus because I only have one stud in this location. If I use the right hardware in addition to the concrete lip that sticks out, I can keep the cabinets floating and well off the floor. But this may not be the case in every garage, so I'm gonna show you an additional way that you can support the cabinet, at least the front of it, if you're mounting the back to the wall. In order to support the front of the cabinet, I'm gonna use threaded insert along with adjustable feet. Since the front of the cabinet is suspended in the air, adding any support to the front of them will make these stronger. The garage floor slopes down and having swivel feet like these, make sure they're pinned to the floor. I ended up moving the levelers back a few inches due to the fact that I lost about a quarter inch from the threaded insert. I would have rather used T-nuts such as these, but I didn't have the ones with the right threading to fit these levelers. Now that I have the feet adjusted, I double check the leveling of the cabinet before I install the screws to mount it to the wall. This cabinet is mounted to only one stud. It sits on the concrete lip and it's also supported near the front. So whatever I plan to store in here, I think it's gonna hold up. Now I'll take the top half of the cabinet, place it on the bottom half, push it towards the wall, and this is also gonna be screwed to just the one stud and also secured to the piece at the bottom with a few screws underneath. Now this is a pretty big and bulky drawer and of course it takes up a lot of space but I just love the functionality of this. So to install this back panel, I had two different thoughts about this. I was going to nail it in place but since I want to be able to remove this panel if I need to take this down, I'm going to screw this in place. And it's also going to make it easier for me when I get ready to paint it so I can just paint this a different color if I choose to do so. With the installation of these cabinets coming together, I get the hinges installed and then get those mounted to the cabinet. I added the front panel to the drawer and while there is some sort of alignment issue going on here, I think I'll fix this before I paint the cabinet, but for now I wanna move forward and make some progress. I used a clamp to hold the door panel in place while I added a few screws from the inside. I'll need to add this final piece to close off the gap. Since this is just a piece of trim, I don't wanna permanently install this by using wood glue or anything like that. If I need to pop it off for some reason, I like that option. So in this case, I just nail it in place using a brad nailer. I'm using an inch and a quarter 18 gauge brad nails, along with Husky's nail gun paired up with the portable electrical ultra quiet air compressor. Now I need to install the handles and I have a few of those. So I made a quick and simple jig to speed up the installation.
Finally, I use a piece of plywood to set the height and spacing for the shelves. Not that I plan to adjust the shelves often, but if I need to, I can take the screws out, adjust them, and put these back in. Now I'll rest the shelf in place, run a bead of wood glue across the front of it, and attach another strip of plywood on the front of that, just to make the shelf look a bit thicker. There's a lot of space in here and there's also a footprint for additional improvement as time goes on. It's a perfect solution for storing power tools, drills, saws, even this small compressor. Now we'll be building this out and adding some additional storage along with this so keep an eye out for that video coming up. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash the like button and if you're new here, be sure to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to ring that bell, especially if you want to be notified when I post a new video. Special thanks to all the Patreon supporters and huge shout out to Ariel and Cliff for being a top supporter of the month.